Great, thanks. Um, and I want to say that uh, great talk, Michelle. I cannot agree uh, more about the, um, the, the the design principle of the overture and also for the biosing. So when we find the things you do more, uh, yeah, when you find the things that you do like repeatedly, uh, repetitively, that's the time to build a new API, a new web service so that you can reuse enough to help yourself, but also um, and help the other team. Okay, today I'm going to talk about the Biosync SDK project and how we use it to build the uh, knowledge base API and how can we use it for the knowledge uh, knowledge integration in the biomedical research. Um, great. So let me. Great. Um, so nowadays, I think for this uh, boss audience, and we all pretty much familiar with uh, API, especially when we talk about the API. And I'm talking about web service API specifically because we use it as a tool to uh, to share the data, share the knowledge. So nowadays we can see the increasing usage of the API in the biomedical field. And a lot of data provider, knowledge provider now not only providing the flat file, and but also providing the API. For example, the open open target project in the day one of the box, right? You have the data and you also provided the GraphQL API, which is great. And now we see this good trend um, and not necessarily replacing the flat file, but those two API and the flat file can be used together, provide more flexible access of all the underlying data, underlying knowledge so that we have a better cell sharing data. So um, to this audience, I think the Biosync project has been presented to uh, multiple times in the past for the boss. So you're probably uh, familiar with or even using the Biosync API we provide. And for example, this is my gene.info focus on the gene in an annotations. And we also provide in the my variant info, my chem data info focus on the chemical and, 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 the, and the drugs. We ha also have the my disease, the disease and the phenotype. And recently we uh, built the my gene set focus on the functional gene set pathway. And we also have a, another smaller one is a taxonomy species, which is just an easy to use API for you to build the, your own Informatics pipeline and or build your own web applications. So, but this is another the focus of the, this talk. We want we want to bring you a new things from another angle from the Biosense project, which is called like a Biosense SDK. It's focused on not not that we provided the API for you to use and so that you don't have to build, but it's really a, a tool to help you to build an additional knowledge API, and that's why we call the Biosense SDK. And here I want to focus on two specific use cases. A, for your particular team, you might have a data, you might build a good, a wonderful knowledge source. You want to make it not just a fire dump, but also providing the API to share your knowledge. And how can I do that, right? And second use case, maybe a more like a larger project or collaborative project involve multiple teams. And if you are the informatics lead, you want to build an integrated knowledge platform for your project. And ideally, this is not just an effort done by one person or one team. Hopefully, distribute the work to the multiple team within your uh, within your uh, large project. Right. So, how can we do that, and how the Biosync SDK can help with these two scenarios? Now, if you look at this chart, I think that's how we think of the kind of a life cycle of building a more sustainable web not, uh, web service API, focus on knowledge sharing, and. Nowadays, I think with a little bit of like software engineering background, you're probably very easy to build an API. And on your laptop, that's relatively easy. You download a file, write a parser, index it in some uh, database, and then you write a simple API, a web query API uh, interface. That's quick, simple. But, um, but when you think about it, you want to build a production ready or sustainable knowledge API. And actually, there's still a lot of work to involve here, right? You need to, for example, the data source might change. And so you need to update, continue update. And then the, if you build the initial version of API and then the underlying package might change, you still need to keep everything up to date. And now if you wanted to uh, meet uh, like the actual usage or increase the usage, you want to deploy to some like a more uh, sustainable, more robust server infrastructure. So maybe it will run more uh, stably. You want to deal with like a maybe no downtime deployment or how can you do that? If you have more user to use and now you need to think about how to scale up how to, and, and more important, how to distribute the work when your project grow uh, bigger and bigger to multiple teams, right? How to scale 
up your application, also how to scale uh, up your development team. So that's what the Biotins API can, uh, Biotins SDK can help. So this is how we can uh, get it started, right? So if you want to build your own API for the scenario one, you start with something called data plugin. And that is basically the very simple. You firstly just uh, write, a, uh, you download your file, you write the pass, write a parser, and that parser will just generate some kind of the uh, JSON output. And typically when we talk about a Biosync API, we, one API focus on one particular, so called like a Biosync type, a gene, a drug, and then you attach the attribute to this object. But if you have multiple entities and you're talking about association, that association itself can be an object too, right? It's like this example, is to talk about the, uh, <coughs> the gene to phenotype association, right? So that itself is the object. So that's your password. And now you need to create a manifest file that creating, adding some metadata about your data source and in particular like the data URL, how to, so that will enable us to help you to check the data source and do a scheduled downloading when there's a new version is available. Right? And then you point to the parser you just have in the upload session. So that's it. And we also recognize that there's uh, some data source that might need to involve like a more complex data workflow. In that case, you can just uh, using the Docker abstract all the complex the workflow, not necessarily in Python because SDK is writing in Python, Python, but you can write it in Java, in R for your complex uh, workflow. And so you still can use this data plugin architecture. You specify not just the HTTP URL, now you have a Docker special as uh, a Docker version of the UI, right? You launch this, launch a container, run something and get something out, right? That's it. And once you have a data plugin, we provide a command line tool called Biosync SLI is a very new feature we just released. So you can run your data plugin you just created in your repo and uh, you can even testing, downloading the data, that's a dump step and you can run the parser that's uploading step, step and uh, all of this is, is no dependency. You don't need to set up any database locally. You just run the parser and upload data to a local SQLite. That's just the easy. And it, all, everything you need, you just locally install the Python, like a Biosync package with this bracket CLI in it, right? So then once that is done and you can inspect your data, check your data, follow if your output follows the best practice. And then you can even run the uh, simple API server locally. You can test your data verify everything looks good, right? Before you move to the per, uh, next level. So uh, now once you are satisfied with the data plugin and then you can um, use the full stack of uh, like a Biosense SDK to, um, to handle all the actual uh, deployment. And maybe you, you, if you want to get like a more flexible query feature, you do need to index it in a more sophisticated database here so you can and do some JSON object merging in the MongoDB, then maybe indexed in Elasticsearch, and then build an API on top of that. That's how the kind of the uh, actual Biosync production API works. That's and now we even provide a Biosync Studio as a web UI on top of this uh, um, underlying uh, Biosync uh, SDK. So manage all the multiple data plugins. You can merge them and build multiple APIs. Build it like a and and each, each data plugin will check the data source, do the data merging. You can do the deployment, manage your data release to the, uh, um, to the AWS or to your local server. And that can be done in this web interface. And that's how exactly how um, Biosense project um, works in the, this as well, like a Bios and NCAS translator project, right? Because the NCAS translator project focusing on the data integration and across all those, a lot of long list of the so-called like a biosync type, right? All of the, this is, even this list is not very complete. So um, Biosync project fits right in. We're not just providing the core API, and but we also host over 50 AP, knowledge APIs for translator host in this website. And we call like a knowledge provider APIs. So, um, so now we build so many APIs and not just a we, Created those API. We use the Biosense SDK actually help the other bias, the other translator team so that they can provide in, they can build the, they, their own like a data plugin I just mentioned, and then we help them to deploy, host the knowledge API. And now we have so many APIs within the uh, translator team. So then we build another 
uh, to work on Smart API as an API registry. And that manages all the like kind of a on like an API lifecycle. For example, uh, testing like uptime, make sure everything's good. And uh, also, um, also providing the live API documentation. It's based on open API standard. So, and it's also even built like the translator specific API portal so that one project and you can manage all the knowledge API within one portal within the uh, smart API registry. Right? And here uh, about the smart API is not just this API registry, you also understand semantics of the biomedical uh, knowledge APIs, right? It tells you, it actually understand how API works by what accepting what parameter in and what output, uh, what response out. And so, and by doing that, annotating all those APIs in the Smart API registry, we have this metadata called MetaKG knowledge. So that's kind of a connect subway map connecting between the multiple biosync uh, project, and that will connect each other between those knowledge um, those entity type with the line representing each API. Right. So you will hear a lot more exciting feature from the uh, Jackson's talk this afternoon and about the Biosync Explorer, which takes the Smart API metadata and will do all this knowledge integration and cross API knowledge queries to answer the more complex of biomedical questions. So, and I will uh, finish here and uh, thanks to all the teams who work behind the uh, Biosync project and the translated project. Thank you.